Today, we're going to be looking at Windows 10 LTSC, my favorite version of Windows and one that I actually personally use on my computer. LTSC stands for Long Term Servicing Channel and it's an enterprise version of Windows that are made for specialist computers. LTSC does not receive any Windows updates, but it does receive security updates and it's supported for many years to come. Now, the only problem with Windows 10 LTSC is licensing it is a little bit of a pain, but there are other ways out there to activate it, which I'm not going to go into. So yeah, let's check out Windows 10 LTSC and see if it's a good option for you out there. So your first challenge getting Windows 10 LTSC is finding an ISO image. Now I personally got mine off the Windows 10 subreddit. However, I found this website here where you can download it directly from Microsoft themselves. So yeah, I'll leave a link to this in the description down below. So it comes under the enterprise downloads of the Microsoft site here. So these are the enterprise versions, but we want LTSC. So find your language here, scroll down. I'm going to go for English Great Britain and then ISO Enterprise LTSC is what you want. Get the 64-bit version or 32-bit version if you're still running a system on 32-bit. And then yeah, just press on it. Leave it to download. It's about 4.6 gigabytes. Right, so we've got the ISO. It's downloaded. Then just get a USB stick. As always, plug it into your computer. Now, I've actually finally listened to you guys and I've got Ventoy. So we don't need to use Rufus. We don't need to keep wiping our USB and installing just one operating system system on there, we can have loads. So if I go here, as you can see, we can drag on multiple ISOs onto one USB. Thank you to everyone who suggested this in the comments. It's been really helpful. And yeah, as you can see, I've got my version here, but we're going to put this on the USB. Now, if you don't know how to install Ventoy, then I'd suggest just looking it up. It's very easy. You just double click, install it on your USB, and then you can just drag in ISOs and boot off multiple ISOs if you want. Uh, but if you don't want to do that, you can always just use Rufus. Pretty easy. You just wipe your USB select the ISO and you're good to go. So I'm just going to copy this ISO onto the USB and then we'll boot off it and uh, we'll check it out. Right, so yeah, we just boot off our USB like this. Ta-da, we have got Ventoy, finally. So we can select whichever operating system we want. Let's go for this one, which is the one we downloaded. And then yeah, just boot in normal mode. Right, so the setup is pretty much just a standard Windows 10 install. Make sure to select Windows 10 Enterprise LTSC Evaluation, like that, accept the license agreement. And yeah, just a simple Windows 10 install after that. I'll be back when we go set it up. Right, so this is the Windows 10 LTSC setup. It's pretty much just like a standard Windows 10 install, really. And I believe we will have the bloatware questions, which is a bit annoying. I forgot to disconnect my network, but that's okay. It'll just install drivers for you. Don't worry too much about that. Right, domain join instead, for sure. Definitely go for that. Don't sign in with a Microsoft account, whatever you do. And then, yeah, we get the famous questions, which is not good. And yeah, just press no to everything, pretty much. All right, here we go. Windows 10 LTSC time. So far, it's pretty much has been like setting up Windows 10 for the first time, but there's some pretty cool features of Windows 10 LTSC. The suspense is killing me. Right, and here we are on the Windows 10 LTSC desktop. So yeah, it's installed my drivers and everything for me, obviously with my Ethernet plugged in. I've got my graphics drivers, USB, all that good stuff. So yeah, it's good that it comes with Windows Update. It installs all your drivers and stuff for you. But after that, nothing else. No feature updates, no bloatware just security updates and that's all you ever need really. So yeah, let's have a look at the start menu here. Look at that, that is beautiful. So we've got all our essential stuff here, like Windows accessories. We've got the old Internet Explorer, but it does come with Edge in the 2021 version, which is a little bit annoying. We've got administrative tools. We've got ease of access. Uh, it does come with Windows Defender, obviously being a Microsoft product. And uh, then we just got the Windows system. So yeah, no Office, no adverts, no Candy Crush, no bloatware. That's literally it. What you see is what you get. So really good. There's nothing pinned to the taskbar here. So we're just going to go ahead and untick that. We're going to hide the search box and then we're just going to put the file explorer there like that. Now you will see text down here, Windows 10 Enterprise LTSC evaluation. Like I said, licensing. I'm not going to go into it, but you can get rid of that and activate this as a home user. It's just not very legal. So yeah, if you're coming for Windows 11 like I was, this is going to feel like a bit of a downgrade, but it's really stable. It's really secure and you just need to set up everything once and then that's it. So if we look at the task manager here, let's have a look at the all important processes. So if we go to performance here, as you can see, we've got 128 processes 
from a fresh setup. Now that is quite a lot, like that's more than like a custom operating system, but we can do something to reduce that. And for a standard version of Windows directly from Microsoft, it's you can't go wrong with it, honestly. It's pretty good. So yeah, we've got about 90 Windows processes, about 32 background processes, but we can reduce that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to go to Windows PowerShell. We're going to run it as administrator here, like that. And we're going to use Chris Titus's tool to basically half our processes. So to do that, just go to his website and copy and paste the code. And yeah, just type in Chris Titus tool doesn't work in internet explorer so we redirect you to edge all right fine we're gonna have to use edge but i'm getting rid of this as soon as i possibly can come on right copy and paste this and paste it in your powershell press enter and we can get rid of edge now right so the magic is happening it'll ask if you want to install chocolatey just go yes to that and here we go this is the chris titus tool so what i tend to do is i go to tweaks and i go to desktop here and this is pretty much all you need really you can customize it a bit more like you can remove katana definitely going to remove edge classic right menu is a windows 11 thing i'm going to disable mouse acceleration as well because i'm a gamer just press run tweaks and yeah it'll just come up with this tweaks are finished done just press ok to that and i think it's getting rid of edge for me yes no more edge finally thank you chris titus you saved me there right so that's the tweaks done all right we probably need to restart so we'll go ahead and do that and then yeah hopefully our processes will be split in half right so just restarting and already my computer's turned on it's so quick the startup time is incredible on ltsc it's really good so yeah then just task manager 62 processes let's go so yeah this is really good you know we haven't had to install a custom operating system directly from microsoft we've installed it ourselves we've debloated it using chris titus's tools and now we've got 63 processes so if you don't trust custom operating systems out there or my ranting video kind of put you off them get windows 10 ltsc it's brilliant you just make it yourself and this is what i personally use on my main computer and i've had no problems with it whatsoever so yeah now just looking at the task manager we've got about 37 windows processes which are all the kind of essential ones really and then we've got 27 background processes so yeah really good we've also kept obviously windows defender as well which is recommended i know it's not the best but it's definitely recommended to have some kind of antivirus on your computer so defender just does the job i suppose and considering we've got about 60 processes on our computer with defender i'd say it's pretty good going right now edge is gone we're going to need a web browser so i've just gone ahead and gone to the old in Internet Explorer here just to download Firefox. Wouldn't recommend using the old Internet Explorer nowadays. So just get your web browser of choice, whether that be Firefox, Brave, Chrome, whatever. I'm not judging. Now we're just going to do a couple of other post install stuff and then we'll do some gaming. So I'm going to go ahead and set Firefox as my default browser now which is very simple. You just do that, select it here. Now, I personally like the old Windows Photo Viewer. Now, it is still included in Windows. It's just disabled in the registry. So we need to go ahead and enable that. So to restore Windows Photo Viewer, I'm just going to use this reg key that I found off Tech Radar. You just open it, press OK, run it. And then what you do is just download a random picture off the internet, right click on it, press open with, then go to more apps, photo viewer, and boom, we've got the old. Now without activating Windows 10 LTSC, you can change your desktop background, just find an image, right click, and boom. <laughs> you don't need to buy a license for that, so that's good. You will still have the light mode enabled, which is a bit annoying, but you can make it dark mode in the registry. So yeah, just copy this address, put it in your regedit, and then go to apps, use light theme, change the value to zero like that and now as you can see we have got windows 10 dark mode i'm teaching you all the tricks today it would be nice to change like the color but yeah this is pretty much all you can do without activating it but yeah there are ways out there to activate it if you're clever enough just be careful and you should be able to find a way to activate it so to get microsoft store back because it doesn't come with it on windows ltsc so you will need the store for the latest minecraft launcher and minecraft bedrock edition if you want to go ahead and install that so to get that just open up cmd and copy and paste this command press enter and here we go microsoft store is installed it obviously adds an extra layer of blow it's an extra windows process but if you do want you know the latest minecraft launcher or you want to play minecraft bedrock edition or you just need something that requires the microsoft store then you can get that here as well now in order to get minecraft you're probably going to need the xbox app 
So yeah, you'll just have to search Xbox in the store and just go ahead and install this. This really hurts to do this, honestly, because we've just spent ages de-bloating Windows 10 and installing a special operating system. And now we've just got to go ahead and get all the dependencies just so Minecraft will work. It's so annoying. And then you'll probably need to fix some of these because the Xbox app requires all these dependencies, which is really dumb. I've tried to install the bare minimum myself, but it never works. So you have no choice but to install all of these, including the feedback hub identity provider game bar yeah just go ahead and install all these honestly i don't know why why did microsoft have to buy minecraft it's so annoying alternatively you could just install a client and just be good to go but if you want the actual minecraft default launcher or you want to play bedrock then you're pretty much stuck doing this i mean look at this feedback hub game bar xbox xbox game bar and then if we go into our task manager here performance 99 processes oh it pains me it really does but but hey, we can now play Minecraft on Windows 10 LTSC. And we can also play Bedrock as well if we want to go ahead and do that. Alternatively, get a client, please get a client, or use Multi MC or Prism Launcher or something like that. But yeah, I just did it this way because I hate myself. Now, there are ways to get Minecraft without the Microsoft Store. For example, on Chris Titus's website, I'm pretty sure he's got a way to install stuff without the Microsoft Store. But for something like Minecraft, I'd say because it always needs to be updated and it will need, obviously, the Microsoft Store dependencies and stuff it's probably best that you just install it the way i've done it i know it's extra background processes and stuff but it's the only way honestly and it's quite annoying but it's just the way we've got to live with i suppose but anyway here we are playing minecraft 1.8.9 on windows 10 ltsc performing as you'd expect really no lag or anything like that we're getting 200 odd fps which is really good and the settings that i'm on are pretty much just default you know fancy graphics maximum smooth lighting and stuff like that so the performance on it's really good so we go ahead and take a look at the task manager performance still under 100 processes playing minecraft which is not bad whatsoever We've obviously got our graphics drivers installed as well. Windows Update did that for us. And yeah, it performs really well. Really good uh, performance. I'm sure you get even more if you used a client or whatever. And yeah, it's just a really good version of Windows that I always install on all my computers. Like, even when I didn't know much about computers, I always went with Windows 10 LTSC just because of how good it was and how there was no bloatware and I didn't have to spend ages using debloater scripts and right click uninstall, right click uninstalling everything on the taskbar, uninstalling everything on the start menu so yeah it's good i'd highly recommend it you will have problems obviously licensing it and maybe obtaining it in the future but yeah this is what i use on my personal system in fact i'll get switched over to my main system now so yeah this is my main system on windows 10 ltsc i've got all my stuff installed everything all moved over and stuff like that i've obviously had to get bedrock edition and the new minecraft launcher obviously with the microsoft store and all that kind of stuff it's a little bit annoying but yeah that's pretty much what i've got to live with so if we take a look at my background processes of my main system here it's probably going to be high because i'm recording you know i've got obs and voice meter but stuff like adobe creative clouds really annoying i don't know why that always has to run in the background flux gaming services google stuff uh, i've obviously got my malware bytes firewall which i highly recommend getting it's worth the extra background process in my opinion and then we've got slack and parsec so i can remote into this computer from my mac uh, but otherwise it's pretty minimal 125 processes it's not bad considering i've got all my stuff set up this is like my daily driver. It still hasn't got really bloated, which is good. But yeah, I've got a 12 core processor and I'm worrying about 125 processes. Honestly, I could probably just install Windows 11 full fat and it'll be fine. But yeah, that is that's just how OCD I've got about processes since doing these videos on my channel. I've got my start menu here, which is open shell. I've got a custom theme as well. I'm not sure if I'll be able to put it in the description or not. If I can try and export it. Yeah, here it is. Fluent AME. I was actually using Windows 11 Ameliorate that's the reason why i downgraded to windows 10 because what happened was i installed windows 11 ameliorated on my main system like an absolute idiot and it messed up a lot of things windows hello didn't work and the whole like, account system was really weird so i wouldn't really recommend doing it on your main system i don't know why i, I think i was just bored so i was just like oh what does this do boom ruin my computer but yeah that's the main reason for downgrading to windows 10 ltsc it's solid it does the 
job. Obviously, Windows 10 is limited now. Microsoft have just announced that Windows 10 support is going to be ending. Not anytime soon, but yeah, they're going to force us all to upgrade to Windows 11 eventually. However, I've got a plan. I'm going to make my own version of Windows 11, and we're going to do that using NT Lite. I've actually been messing around with this software quite a lot, making my own little Notro OS, and I'm going to show you guys how to do it very soon. So make sure you guys look out for that video. Get subscribed down below and turn on post notifications so you know when that video drops. And yeah, that's going to be the video, guys. Hope you guys all enjoyed this little look at Windows 10 LTSC. Let me know if you try it in the comments and how you get on with it, and I'll see you in my next video. Peace.